Combining country, blues, and our VEB influences, Dire Straits made their mark on the late 1970s and 1980s music scene with a rock and roll sound that stood out among the punk, new wave, and heavy metal trends. Getting back to the roots of rock, Dire Straits featured a simple sound that filled a stylistic gap. Led by singer Mark Knopfler, the group launched into stardom in the mid-1980s with their album Brothers in Arms and the mega-hit single Money for Nothing. Dire Straits began in London with the collaboration of bassist John Ilsley and Mark Knopfler. Knopfler had graduated with a degree in English and was writing for the Yorkshire Evening Post. He left this job to pursue a career in music and took a part-time job as a teacher at Lawton College to stay financially solvent. Knopfler performed with pub bands around town, including Brewers Droop and Cafe Racers. After a divorce and financial difficulties, he ended up sleeping on the floor of his brother David's flat, where Ilsley also lived. David Knopfler also played guitar and, in 1977, the three men decided to form a band. After recruiting drummer Pick Withers, they began rehearsing. A friend of Mark Knopfler's helped them decide on their name, a reference to their financial situation. We never said anything about this to each other, David Knopfler told Dias and McLean in Rolling Stone, but I had a feeling something was going to start happening, for real. Soon after the band members borrowed some money to record a five-song demo tape, which included their future single Sultans of Swing. They took the tape to a DJ named Charlie Gillett, who had a radio show called Honky Tonk on BBC Radio London. Originally, they just wanted some feedback from Gillett, but the announcer liked the music so much, he played Sultans of Swing on the radio. Two months later, Dire Straits signed a recording contract with Phonogram Records. In 1978, Dire Straits began touring Great Britain as the opening band for Talking Heads. After their debut single Sultans of Swing started to climb the UK charts, the group went on their own headlining tour. Their newfound notoriety led to a US recording contract with Warner Brothers Records, and before the end of the year, Dire Straits had released their self-titled debut worldwide. They received more and more attention in the United States and landed at the top of the charts in Australia and New Zealand. The following year, Dire Straits performed in their first North American tour. They played 51 sold-out concerts over a 38-day period. Sultans of Swing scaled the charts to number 4 in the United States and number 8 in Great Britain, while Dire Straits reached number 2 and number 5 on the respective album charts. Bob Dylan, who saw the band play in Los Angeles, was so impressed that he invited Mark Knopfler and Pick Withers to play on his next album, Slow Train Coming. By the end of 1979, Dire Straits had released their sophomore effort, Communique, which included the single Lady Writer. Again, the album flew up the charts, reaching number 11 in the United States and number 5 in Great Britain. Mark Knopfler began to establish himself as a sought-after guitarist and put into motion what would become a long string of side work. In 1980, he played as a guest guitarist on Phil Linett's album Solo in Soho and Steely Dan's Gaucho. In July of 1980, David Knopfler officially quit Dire Straits to pursue a solo career. David was under a lot of strain, John Ilsley explained to Ken Tucker and David Frick in Rolling Stone. Mark felt very responsible for David and didn't quite know what to do. Once the next release, Making Movies was out and David had left, it seemed to lift a tremendous strain. Mark felt very freed. Shortly after David Knopfler left the group, Dire Straits added former Darlings guitarist Hal Lindes and keyboardist Alan Clark to their ranks. They immediately headed into the studio to record their next LP, Making Movies, which included the single Skate Away, Romeo and Juliet, and Tunnel of Love. The differences in the band and in Mark Knopfler didn't go unnoticed. David Frick commented in Rolling Stone, Making Movies is the record on which Mark Knopfler comes out from behind his influences, and Dire Straits come out from behind Mark Knopfler. The band embarked on an extensive tour, but took some time off before releasing Love Over Gold in 1982, which included the single Industrial Disease. Knopfler's songwriting sessions were so prolific that the song Private Dancer didn't make it on the album, but it became a huge hit for Tina Turner. After the album's release, drummer Pick Withers left the band and was later replaced by Terry Williams. The following year, Dire Straits performed another world tour. 
Knopfler had also moved into producing albums for other artists and composing film scores. At the end of the year, he took some time off from work to marry his second wife, Lord Salamone. In 1984, Dire Straits released a live album from their previous tour called Alchemy Dire Straits Live. John Ilsley also released a solo album on Vertigo slash Phonogram called Never Told a Soul. In 1985, Hal Lindy's left the band and was replaced by guitarist Jack Sonny. The new ensemble released the most successful Dire Straits album in the band's history, Brothers in Arms. The album debuted at number one in Great Britain and quickly soared to the top of the charts in the United States as well. It went on to become a number one album in 25 countries and sold 20 million copies worldwide. The chart-topping hit Single Money for Nothing featured guest vocalist Sting on the unforgettable I Want My MTV refrain. Dire Straits produced an animated video for the song, directed by Steve Barron, which quickly jumped to heavy rotation on MTV, music television. In fact, Sting's phrase became the tagline for the cable station. Other singles on Brothers in Arms included Walk of Life and So Far Away. Following the release of Brothers in Arms, Dire Straits went on a 12-month tour across the world. In 1986, they were nominated for eight Grammy Awards and received two, Best Rock Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal and Best Engineered Recording, Non-Classical. They garnered two more awards for Money for Nothing at the third annual MTV Video Music Awards for Best Group Video and Best Video. They also secured honors for Best British Group and Best British Album at the Brit Awards. The following year, they were awarded yet another Grammy in the category of Best Music Video, Longform, for Dire Straits Brothers in Arms. With the enormous success of Brothers in Arms, the members of Dire Straits were under a significant amount of stress. In September 1988, Mark Knopfler officially announced the breakup of the band. A lot of press reports were saying we were the biggest band in the world, Knopfler told Rob Tannenbaum in Rolling Stone. There's not an accent then on the music, there's an accent on popularity. I needed a rest. The dissolution of the band was followed up with a greatest hits compilation called Money for Nothing. In addition to his guest appearances, production and film work, Knopfler formed another band called the Notting Hillbillies. In 1990 the group released the album Missing. Presumed having a good time. After the recording's release, Knopfler, Ilsley, and manager Ed Bicknell decided to resurrect Dire Straits. In August of 1991, the reformed band began a two-year, 300-show tour and played in front of some 7.1 million ticket-buying fans. This time, Dire Straits included original members Knopfler and Ilsley, along with keyboardists Guy Fletcher and Alan Clark, saxophonist Chris White, drummer Chris Whitten and percussionist Danny Cummings. The following month, the group released the album On Every Street, which included the singles Calling Elvis, Heavy Fuel, and My Parties. As the first Dire Straits album in six years, it moved up the charts to number one in Great Britain and number 12 in the United States. The extensive tour proved to be too much for Dire Straits members and led to the band's second demise. Bill Flanagan described the sequence of events in Gentleman's Quarterly. The subsequent Voral tour lasted nearly two years, made mountains of money and drove Dire Straits into the ground. When the tour was over, both Knopfler's marriage and his band were gone. Following the tour, Knopfler took some time off from the music business. In 1993, he received an honorary music doctorate from the University of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Two more Dire Straits albums were released, the live album On the Night in 1993, and Live at the BBC, featuring the band's early live recordings, in 1995. Knopfler returned to the limelight in 1996 with his solo album Golden Heart, which included the single Darling Pretty. This song also appeared on the soundtrack for the film Twister. Knopfler discussed his career's resolution with Flanagan in Gentleman's Quarterly, I am in show business, Knopfler explained. It's the most embarrassing game in the world. It would be much better if you could just send your paintings to the dealer and disappear. I am also in love with music. So you have to find a way. Despite the end of Dire Straits, Knopfler has carried on the band's signature guitar and vocal styles.